He's uh, Doug Gottlieb from CBS Sports joining us. Uh, let me see. Where do you want to start? You made some news over the weekend with Roy Williams. Let's let's recap how it started and where it stands now between you and Roy Williams at North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were on a show uh, preceding the North Carolina-Miami basketball game. Yeah. The title of the show, the name of the show, is Inside College Basketball. Uh, so uh, early on, we talked about Roy Williams not calling a timeout against Duke, to which I said Roy Williams doesn't call timeout. He, he probably should have, uh, but he's never been a, a details guy in terms of what a team does. At the, he lets his kids play. That's who he is. There's some flaws to his style, but he's been incredibly successful with his style. Uh, we came back around to Roy Williams at the end of the show before we sent it to the Carolina-Miami game, and Bill Raftery sat down with him and talked about the vertigo. And um, he, he discussed, you know, in typical Roy Williams fashion, you know, I, I just I wanted to be in the hallway in case we lost to be there for my kids. And um, so as we had discussed in a pre-show meeting, I told Greg Gumbel, and Greg Gumbel teed me up for it, that, look, inside college basketball circles, there is a sense that this could be his last year, especially if they make a Final Four run or win a national championship. He's had some – he lost his best friend last year. Um, He's had some knee issues. He has the vertigo. They have the pending NCAA stuff, still kind of hovering over it. And he doesn't have the same – he is an unbelievable recruiter. He recruited one of my dad's players, uh, Deion um, uh, Deion Thompson, at North Carolina. And when he was out, my dad was doing, coaching him in AAU basketball. And he's an unbelievably energetic, positive recruiter. And he gravitates towards kind of kids that, that he feels like he can get in early, sit at every game, and make them, his, make them his, feel like they're his prized possession. That energy seems to be lessened recently. And whether it's the NCAA stuff or whatever, he's not the same. And there are people that I know in the program that, that there's this growing sense. So that's all I said. And then, of course, it came back around to him. I believe he said his SID told him that on the pregame show, I said he's going to retire and Hubert Davis is going to take over, which is not what I said. And then his reaction was it was a game of telephone more so than reacting to any journalistic, you know, reporting report. Would you have done it differently knowing how it ended up? No. No. Uh, Should I have? I mean, I I guess I, I ask you. I mean, you have twice the experience in this business, and you are a journalist. Uh, I view myself as an analyst, a basketball insider, and a personality uh, in that order. And inside college basketball, as the title of the show, that's an inside college basketball, things that people are talking about, and it fit the game that we were sending people to. Did anybody say anything in the meeting, that pre-show meeting about? Well, this? That's actually it's good you brought that up because when I said it on TV, it was the same as – what was said in the meeting, Seth Davis, and I thought this is where it was good balance. Seth Davis was like, I don't see it that way. I don't think he'll leave the program on probation. So in the, if, you, if you take it in, in, out of the context and just say, I said he's going to retire, Hubert Davis is going to take over, it's not what I said. In addition to which, there was balance in it when Seth Davis disagreed. And that's a, an inside college basketball discussion. And my, my point about Hubert Davis was more, he does everything the way that Dean Smith did it. And if you remember when Dean Smith retired, he waited until right before the season, and they appointed his right-hand man, Bill, Guth- Bill Guthridge, the head coach, took him to two Final Fours, and, and eventually he retired himself. So I, I think there is – that was the parallel. It wasn't I'm saying Hubert's the guy. I look at that staff, and if there's one guy who could take over that program amidst a likely – some sort of NCAA probation, it would be Hubert. He's Doug Gottlieb from CBS Sports joining us, Dan Patrick. So how did you leave it with Roy? Um – it's been left where it is. I, I, should I should I reach out to him? I mean, I, I don't. I'm, again, I'm I'm asking more as a friend that we just happen to be on radio. In your in your personal opinion, should I reach out to him? Um, I I would. I I, I don't think it can be bad. By by, do, have you tried to be, have him on your show? I had him on my show earlier this year, and I actually asked him that exact same question because I and there, there was a reason I asked him the question because. I knew what people were saying. He said, you know, four to six years, but, you know. But he can't be honest with you there. Of course he can't. Of course he can't. Yeah. Um, I have not yet. Oh, yeah, we did reach out. That's not true. We did reach out uh, to his SID, Steve Kirshner, and he said, uh, in light of his comments, uh, both before the game and at halftime, it's a no. Okay. So. I would think, I would think privately you have a conversation. Yeah, I don't have any problem. I mean, he even, like, I, I think that people... 
he went into the shorts on backwards thing, which I don't know if you guys know the story. I'd uh, forgotten all about it. All of a sudden, I see Roy going, yeah, Doug can't even put his shorts on. Yeah. Shorts on backwards, shorts on backwards. Now, he was doing the shorts on backwards chant. He suddenly became a KU, like, a KU student for a second.